नमस्कार जय श्री कृष्ण एन लाइटनिंग टेक्स थ्री ऑफ चैप्टर नाइन आंसर बाय साइटिंग द लॉर्ड्स वर्जन ऑफ सेकंड कैंड ऑफ द कॉस्मिक मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम टेक्स थ्री यर ही वाव महिमनी स्वे परस्मिन काल माय यो रमे गत सोह त्यक्वो दास्ते तदोमय As soon as the living entity becomes situated in his constitutional glory and begins to enjoy the transcendence beyond time and material energy, he at once gives up the two misconceptions of life, I and mine, and thus becomes fully manifested as the pure self. The two misconceptions of life, namely I and mine, are verily manifested in two classes of men. In the lower state, the conception of mine is very prominent, and in the higher state, the conception of I is prominent. In the animal state of life. The misconception of mind is perceivable even in the category of cats and dogs who fight with one another with the same misconception of mind. In the lower stage of human life, the same misconception is also prominent in the shape of it is my body, it is my house, it is my family, it is my caste, it is my nation, it is my country, and so on. And in the higher stage of speculative knowledge, the same misconception of mind is transformed into I am or it is all I am, etc. There are two classes of men comprehending the same misconception of I and mine in different colors. But the real significance of I can be realized only when one is situated in the consciousness of I am the eternal servitor of the Lord. This is pure consciousness, and the whole Vedic literatures teach us this conception of life. The misconception of I am the Lord or I am the supreme is more dangerous than the misconception of mine. Although there are sometimes directions in the Vedic literatures to think oneself one with the Lord. that does not mean that one becomes identical with the lord in every respect undoubtedly there is oneness of the living entity with the lord in many respects but ultimately the living entity is subordinate to the lord and he is constitutionally meant for satisfying the senses of the lord the lord therefore asks the conditioned souls to surrender unto him had the living entities not been subordinate to the supreme will why would the living entity be asked to surrender had the living being been equal in all respects then why was he put under the influence of maya we have already discussed many times that the material energy is controlled by the lord the bhagavad gita 9.10 confirms this controlling power of the lord over the material nature can a living entity who claims to be as good as the supreme being control the material nature the foolish i would reply that he will do so in the future even accepting that in the future one will be as good a controller of material nature as the supreme being then why is one now under the control of material nature the bhagavad gita says that one can be freed from the control of the material nature by surrendering unto the supreme lord but if one is not surrendered then the living entity will never be able to control the material nature so one must also give up the misconception of i by practicing the way of devotional service or formally being situated in a transcendental loving service of the lord a poor man without any employment or occupation may undergo so many troubles in life but if by chance the same man gets a good job under the government he at once becomes happy there is no profit in denying the supremacy of the lord who is the controller of all energies but one should be constitutionally situated in one's own glory namely to be situated in the pure consciousness of being the eternal servitor of the lord in condition life the living entity is servant of the illusory maya and in his liberated state he is the pure unqualified servant of the lord to become untinged by the modes of material nature is the qualification for entering into the service of the lord as long as one is a servant of mental concoctions one cannot be completely free from the disease of i and mine the supreme truth is uncontaminated by the illusory energy because he is the controller of that energy the relative truths are apt to be engrossed in illusory energy the best purpose is served however when one is directly facing the supreme truth as when one faces the sun the sun overhead in the sky is full of light but when the sun is not in the visible sky all is in darkness similarly when one is face to face with the supreme lord he is freed from all illusions and one who is not so is in the darkness of illusory maya the bhagavad gita 14.26 confirms this as follows mam cha yo avyavicharen bhakti yogen sevate sa gunan samatit yaitan brahma bhuyaya kalpate so the science of bhakti yog of worshiping the lord glorifying the lord hearing the shrimad bhagavatam from the right sources and not from the professional man but from a person who is bhagavatam in life 
farming always in the association of pure devotees should be adopted in earnestness one should not be misled by the misconception of i and mine the karmis are fond of the conception of mine the gnanis are fond of the conception of i and both of them are unqualified to be free from the bondage of the illusory energy shrimad bhagavatam and primarily the bhagavad gita are both meant for delivering a person from the misconception of i and mine and shri lavyas they transcribe them for the deliverance of the fallen souls the living entity has to be situated in the transcendental position where there is no more influence of time nor of the material energy in conditioned life the living entity is subjected to the influence of time in the dream of past present and future the mental speculator tries to conquer the influence of time by future speculations of becoming vasudev or the supreme lord himself by means of culturing knowledge and conquering over ego but the process is not perfect the perfect process is to accept lord vasudev as the supreme in everything and the best perfection in culturing knowledge is to surrender unto him because he is the source of everything only in that conception can one get rid of the misconception of i and mine both bhagavad gita and the shrimad bhagavatam confirm this shri lavyas dev has specifically contributed to the illusion living entities the science of god and the process of bhakti yog in his great literature shrimad bhagavatam and the conditioned soul should fully take advantage of this great science hari krishna